I suppose we can get going and an official welcome to uh, History at High Noon. This is the photography of Philip C. Walter Meyer. Um, uh, when I gave the talks on uh, James H. Hamilton and John Frost, it's fun to put these talks together, um, kind of seeing the world through the eyes of a camera of a photographer who was around Sioux City from the late 19th into the earliest 20th century. So let's get started on who, who I've, uh, a man who I find is a very fascinating photographer with a lot of diverse uh, subject matter. Philip Chancy Walter Meyer, a rather dandy looking gentleman. I love that outfit. Uh, Walter Meyer was born in Ghent, New York in 1851. His parents were John and Sarah Jacoby Walter Meyer. The family moved to Racine, Wisconsin from New York in the 1860s. It was there in Wisconsin that Walter Meyer learned the photography trade and set up his own business in Racine in 1869. He didn't stay there very long because he moved to Ashland, Nebraska in 1872. Ashland is about halfway between Omaha and Lincoln. And in 1872, he became that town's first photographer. There in Ashland, he married um, Rose M. McGee in 1880. The couple, along with a, the couple children who were born by that time, moved to Lincoln, Nebraska in 1887. And eventually, in 1890, the Walter Myers moved to Sioux City um, in 1890 um, from the advice of Walter Myers' brother-in-law and Rose's brother, David A. McGee. So, the first section of this talk is what, uh, what Walter Meyer is probably best known for, and those are his scenes of the Riverside Park area and just um, entertainment along uh, the Big Sioux River and in Riverside Park, going up um, as far as into the Plymouth County area up along the Big Sioux River. So this is an image um, of just canoeing, probably taken around 1890, but what I found fascinating about this, if you look in the left side of the photo, you can see, possibly see the credit, it's Walter Meyer, and it still has his Lincoln, Nebraska address. So he was reusing some of his old cardstock from his previous location. We see this with uh, several other early photographers as well. Walter Meyer captured this image of the switchback roller coaster um, in Riverside Park. Uh, the, the, the roller coaster had been built in 1890. Today, this is on the site of the uh, of the pool house at the Riverside, uh, Riverside Pool. What the crowd is gathered there, I do not know. How do we get to Riverside? There really aren't roads out to Riverside yet, and there aren't cars. Um, the, pub the public transportation of this area to the west side from downtown was the Sioux City Highland Park steam-powered transit line. It opened in 1886. Walter Meyer captured this image in around 1891. This is a large excursion boat, the Ida Blanche, on the Big Sioux River around 1893. The Ida Blanche served both on the Big Sioux and Missouri Rivers here in Sioux City from 1893 to 1895. The boat clubs in Riverside were a big deal. Here, Walter Meyer has captured a sculling crew on the Big Sioux River in August of 1894. Both the Sioux City and Riverside boat clubs um, had sculling teams, and there would be cl uh, club competitions from across the state. Um, Riverside and Sioux City Boat Club were both um, well regarded and respected in their, in their sculling and rowing teams. I mentioned excursions or, or boat trips, um, sometimes day-long events that, were, that started in Riverside Park and went up the Big Sioux River, um, and Walter Meyer captured some of the scenes along the way. In this image, uh, entitled Landslide, we can see a Los Hills landslide up the Big Sioux River, again sometime around 1895. The boat you see there is the excursion boat Minnehaha, and it began um, operating on the, Missouri, or, um, sorry, on the Big Sioux River in the 1890s. Another similar image is this photograph of the last bend along the Big Sioux River 18, around 1895. Now I mentioned the Minnehaha motored as far north as the mouth of Broken Kettle Creek. 
So Broken Kettle Creek, where it enters the Big Sioux River, is about 16 miles upriver from where the Big Sioux enters the Missouri. So it's about another eight miles or so farther north of Sioux City that the Minnehaha boat operated. Here is the Minnehaha again at Grapevine Bend. Um, I believe, I'm not 100% sure on the exact locations of some of these photographic destinations, um, but I'm guessing this is probably about three miles up north of the northern Sioux City uh, boundary. Here is Dot Island on the Big Sioux River, depicted around 1895. Some other points of interest that Walter Meyer photographed along the way were uh, Talbot's Farm, which is today Stone Park, Old Mill, which was an, actually an old milling site for the town of Jefferson, um, Welch's Bridge, which is one of a few bridge crossings across the Big Sioux River in this era, and Bell Vista Farm, which is um, up a lot, right along the Broken Kettle Creek um, along the Big Sioux River. Walter Meyer captured other images, and a lot of these would be used in publications later on. That's how I'm getting some of these dates around 1895. This was a government snag puller that was based here in Sioux City from 1891 to 1907. It wintered at the Big Sioux Ice Harbor, which was just opposite the boat clubs along the Big Sioux River. This is the boat, the James B. McPherson. There was a question, are these all from glass plates? So actually, yes, some of the scans I'm using in this are directly off of glass plates. In some cases, we have prints. But yes, at this time, he would, Walter Meyer would have been using almost exclusively glass plate negatives. Walter Meyer captured this image, one of the most popular images of the Council Oak Tree. If you see a picture of the Council Oak Tree, it's most likely this or a copy of this. Um, so the Burr Oak Tree, um, doing the math, probably started growing as a sapling in the late 1600s, but in the 1880s, Riverside Park promoters made up legends about Indian councils or Lewis and Clark councils under the tree to attract visitors. Here's a really neat shot of elephants bathing in the Big Sioux River in 1903. The Ringling Brothers Circus was in town on the 3rd of September and thousands gathered along the banks of the, the Big Sioux to see elephants bathe. And they are right here. There are about three elephants, I believe, in this image. The famous diving elk, one of, one of Walter Meyer's, most likely one of his most famous images, this image taken around 1900. Um, William Barnes trained his elk, King Rex and Cuba, to jump off a platform. Here is Barnes on a sulky being pulled by one of his elk. This photograph taken around 1900 at the Sioux City Fairgrounds in South Riverside, near where the Interstate 29 and Riverside Boulevard interchange is today. Barnes had other acts, including Pacing Johnny, this image taken around 1900 of Barnes there in the white suit and his horse Pacing Johnny. Um, there were other acts, including Princess Trixie and Ted and Ned, which were a horse and dog act. Barnes's most popular act by far was Princess Trixie, the queen of all educated horses. This photograph was taken around 1900. Um, Barnes, Trixie, and sometimes the elk traveled the United States and even went to Europe. And they did these traveling shows across the United States up until 1909. This particular image is neat because it's taken at Barnes's home, which was at 1416 West 15th Street. And actually, if you're interested, that house is still standing. Going back to just general Riverside Park views, this is a wintertime panorama taken from the bluffs above Riverside Park around 1905. From the left to the right, in the far distance, you can see the Sioux City Boat Club, the Pavilion, which was a joint enterprise of the two boat clubs, just another entertainment venue, um, amusements, here is the giant swing here in the center of the photograph. Here's Walter Meyer's depiction of a balloon ascension in Riverside Park taken around 1906. Now balloon ascensions were really popular attractions from the late 1800s into the early 1900s. This performance was probably won by Professor William E. Pop Winteringer, 
the balloon is advertising the Wyckoff Piano Company, and you can see this little thing right here. I've blown it up, and here you can actually see on the left, there is uh, probably Winteringer taking, uh, taking flight with his balloon. Just general scenes, uh, other general scenes along the Big Sioux River and in Riverside Park. This was a large spoonbill catfish, or paddlefish, caught around 1910. Other catfish tales include this big catfish, which you can see here, uh, caught on May 17, 1910. Vigo Thompson, Will Daniels, who was the pilot of the Minnehaha, and Carl Nelson, who owned the Riverside uh, boat livery, caught this 105-pound catfish on the Big Sioux River. Well, to keep up with the action, Walter Meyer actually had a studio and temporary home in Riverside Park. It made access to all these events easy, especially in the summertime. So this is Walter Meyer's studio, and if you look in the back of this image, there's a, a small kind of a gazebo building, and hanging in that building, you can see some of his photog uh, photographs, which are for sale. Not only did he have his uh, A studio there, eventually he would move from his home in the center of Sioux City, he and Rose would move to Riverside Park. They moved there permanently in 1905, and this was their home in, in one of the cabins out in Riverside Park. I want to take a, just a brief look at some of other, Sioux City's other commercial photographers who, who, was do, who were doing the same kind of work as Walter Meyer. Um, most, most photographers made their money on taking pictures of people, just portraits, like a portrait studio. Only a few others, like Frank Beamer, M.W. Starks, Youngberg, and Dr. William Bates, ventured into more diverse kind of projects. And just as, as a sample, I've included this uh, Beamer studio image there of the Pelletier fire, and then another uh, photo of the 1898 Mondamon Carnival taken by M.W. Starks, who started Ginelli Photography, who, who moved Ginelli Photography to Sioux City in 1887. So, the next part I want to look at are some of the big events captured by Walter Meyer's camera. We know he was in Sioux City by 1890 because he took pictures of the 1890 uh, Corn Palace. Um, this is just one of many depictions of the building we have. Um, and as you've seen before in the bottom corners, we're, we're very often going to see his Walter Meyer signature. This Corn Palace was at the northeast corner of 6th and Pierce Streets. So, this is a fantastic panorama of Sioux City taken during the time of the Corn Palace Festival. If you look on the far left side of the screen, you can just see the top of the 1890 Corn Palace sticking up right there. Now, circuit cameras, or cameras that take panoramic photos, didn't exist yet. So what we're actually seeing here is three separate images from three glass plate negatives that have simply been printed and then glued to a large mat. So that is how Walter Meyer was assembling these panoramas. Here we have the Corn Palace of 1891 depicted by Walter Meyer. This uh, structure was on the same location as the other, as the earlier Corn Palace, but of course this uh, palace straddled Pierce Street, again on the north side of 6th. Walter Meyer was one of about four or five photographers who captured images of the May 1892 Floyd River flood. This uh, photograph was taken from the bluff um, along Floyd, what is today Floyd Boulevard and depicts several houses there between 804 and 812 Clark Street. Here is a stereographic view that Walter Meyer took also of the flood. This is looking north up the Sioux City and Northern Railroad tracks around 5th and Missouri streets. And I still have a handful more shots of this flood, um, this from May of 1892, looking at the Milwaukee Railroad Bridge on 2nd Street over the Floyd River. Um, Jacob Kirch was having a pretty bad day when its house was um, knocked off its foundation. Uh, Kirch lived at 2325 4th Street. 
Walter Meyer captured this additional image of the flood. This is a nice one because it also shows um, Sioux City's elevated railroad. This happens to be the Iowa Street station of Sioux City's elevated railroad at 3rd and Iowa Street. This image taken from the roof of the Evans block at 4th and Iowa. An image from the former Stockyards area looking to the north of the Floyd River Valley. Um, we can see there on the right is Silverhorn Packing, which would eventually become Armor Packing. Back out to Riverside again. Walter Meyer captured these photos of the Iowa National Guard encampment of 1892. This was companies H and L of the Iowa National Guard. This year, they called it Camp Rice, and this is in Riverside Park. Here we see uh, some exhibition uh, weapons firing at that National Guard encampment, again in September of 92. And several members of the of Company L of the 4th Regiment of the Iowa National Guard. There are a whole lot of names there. I don't need to read them all. The following year, 1893, Walter Meyer was back taking photographs of the next National Guard encampment. These happened periodically throughout the 1890s. This time, instead of being Camp Rice, we have Camp Stone, but again, in about the same place in Riverside Park. You can also see that old, the switchback roller coaster here in the background. Here are the Iowa National Guard tents throughout the center of this valley. Artillery practice for the Iowa National Guard. And here we have officers of Company L, Captain Rudy, Lieutenant Allen, and Lieutenant Kirk. Next, we have a cool little series on Sergeant Floyd and his grave and the monument. So this is a depiction by Walter Meyer of Sergeant Charles Floyd's grave in 1894. It's a not rather grand, but we have a couple of posts at this time which were marking Floyd's burial place. In 1895, on the 91st anniversary of Floyd's death, part of the Lewis and Clark expedition, um, this granite slab was put in place. Now, Walter Meyer, being a businessman, started producing these pinback buttons. There are about two inches or so, inch and a half, in diameter, and he would produce these for major Sioux City events. And you'll see more of these as we go along through this presentation. Here, Walter Meyer has depicted the beginning of a construction on the Floyd Monument on the 29th of May, 1900. Here on the platform in the center, we can see Colonel H.M. Chittenden, a government engineer, and Jenny Charles and John Hare Charles. Hare, John Hare Charles was president of the Floyd Memorial Association, which raised funds to build the monument. Here we are looking at the laying of the concrete foundation, which is, which is in the, immediately behind that platform. Here is the completion, you may recognize this image, the completion of the new Floyd Monument in May of 1901. This, we have, here we have Albert Hansen, David A. McGee, who was mayor at the time, and who was also Walter Meyer's brother-in-law, Nels Anderson and former, foreman Julius Overson. Now, the thing that gets me about this photograph, the scaffolding was not very large around the, the monument while it was being constructed, and we can see Walter Meyer is pretty far back I, I certainly, I, I'm not a, a fan of heights. I certainly would not have been up there, and I certainly wouldn't have been that far away. Uh, uh, who knows how close he was to the edge? I don't, I don't really want to think about that. <laughs> Here's one of the plaques from the Floyd Monument. Of course, Walter Meyer produced buttons um, of this particular plaque commemorating um, Floyd and the Lewis and Clark expedition. Here is Walter Meyer's depiction of the completed Floyd Monument from May of 1901. Here is the dedication of the Floyd Monument as taken by Walter Meyer on the 30th of May, 1901. And last but not least, in this series of images on Walter Meyer's photos of, of Sergeant Charles Floyd, is a weird one that he took in 1895 when uh, Charles Floyd was exhumed to be moved so the monument could be built on more stable ground. And here is 
one of about six photos we have of Sergeant Charles Floyd's head. This one is good because it is um, attested to be Floyd's skull by J.C.C. Hoskins and C.R. Marks, two older gentlemen who were uh, unofficial city historians. The Mondayment Carnival was meant to uh, revive the spirit of the defunct corn palaces. So this is a picture of the Mondayment Carnival on the 4th of October, um, 1897. A similar photo appeared in the journal with the caption, the reception of mud kiwis, at the, and this was probably at the old corn palace lot at 6th and Pierce. Walter Meyer didn't do a whole lot of photos that I've been able to find of the Mondayman Carnival or the Sioux City Carnival, but he did, uh, you can see these six images. These are likely, these, I, well, we know they're taken by Walter Meyer, but were likely produced to, uh, to put on a pinback button. I've just never seen the particular buttons to which these images uh, belong. This is uh, 1900. In 1900, the Iowa State Library Association held their 11th annual meeting here in Sioux City on the 18th and 19th of October. So there we have a picture of the city library and city hall building there in the center and on a button produced by Walter Meyer. The Interstate Livestock Fair, which started in 1903 and went to 1926, was often the subject of Walter Meyer's photos. Again, he was based in Riverside, so it's not hard for him to get down there and take pictures. This is September of 1904, and the act he's depicting here is Dunbar's Trapeze Act at the Woodland Park Fairgrounds in South Riverside. There are a couple more photos, like this one, uh, at that same, same day, almost the exact same location, Again, the Interstate Livestock Fair in 1904. Walter Meyer was the official photographer of that year's fair. So here we have um, some kind of, I'm guessing, a, a roller, uh, roller skate um, act. Uh, again, something I wouldn't do, as heights are not, my heights are, are, are elusive to me. <laughs> Just another image of that same platform, an act there. Um, a gentleman riding around in a bicycle or a motorcycle within that barrel, again, the live, uh, livestock uh, fair. Pelletier, or, uh, sorry, Walter Meyer, goes down as the only photographer to, that we know of that actually caught the Pelletier fire while it was burning. So this is the Pelletier fire of December 23rd, 1904. This fire destroyed two and a half blocks of downtown, resulting in almost $2 million of damage. Walter Meyer was on top of the United Bank building at 6 and Jackson Street, taking this picture, looking to the south there on the, the right, uh, left-hand side of the screen. That is, that's Jackson Street, so this is uh, between Jackson and Nebraska, just across the street from us here. This is the aftermath um, of the 1904 Pelletier fire. This is the remains of the toy block at the southeast corner of 4th and Jackson Street. As a little bit of trivia, as if there wasn't so much trivia in this talk already, the toy block was Sioux City's tallest building at 135 feet tall, at least from 1890 to 1897. One more image of the aftermath of the 1904 Pelletier fire. This is the remains of the Bolton and Commercial Block at the southeast corner of 4th and Nebraska Streets. We're back in 1905 to the Interstate Fairgrounds. This, a very similar image to this, appeared in the Sioux City Journal. So baritone singer Bert Morphy, who you can see right here, sings his hits Farewell My Annabelle and Tim Tulin, while Moses Reed's band, his 4th Regiment band, uh, accompanies. Moving ahead a year, this is the Interstate Livestock Fair of 1906. Here you can see thousands of spectators gathered, the grandstand and fence line, for horse races. Now this is only one segment of a much larger image. So we can see here on the top of the screen is just a poor, is the complete image, and we can see people lined up all the way around the Interstate Fairground tracks. And the bottom, uh, at the bottom, I've blown up just a little section. You can see the horse barns, which would be on the far left hand of that image. We have people standing along the fence line and even sitting on top of the horse barns. So a big crowd. And again, Walter Meyer put this image together 
um, using individual photos and just seaming them very close together. This Walter Meyer image depicts Dan Patch, the fastest horse in the world who visited Sioux City in 1906. Dan Patch arrived with his driver, Henry Hersey, on September 10th. And this is good. From the few years before, Patch was so beloved in Sioux City that his stall was decorated with pictures of himself. So there were pictures of the horse in his stall. Woodland Park, or the Interstate Fairgrounds, functioned for, as more than just uh, for the fair. So Woodland Park, this is the automobile track in South Riverside. Here we see this 1907 image of famed racer Barney Oldfield in his green dragon car just ahead of Ali Savini and his red devil. So this race held in August of 1907. Again, the Sioux City Journal had an image similar to, had this exact image, but in, in our collection, we also have other glass plate negatives that are almost identical, taken within, within seconds of this. A small disaster, the Perry Creek flood of 1909. Walter Meyer captured this image looking west from Fifth and Water Streets over the Fifth Street streetcar bridge. This is an image of the Schenkberg Exposition Parade of 1909. Um, you can see the streetcars participating in this parade. The white one there in the center is, all, is decorated in flowers and marked Schenkberg. So Conrad Schenkberg, who owned a large wholesale grocery business here, started this exposition in 1908. And it was to advertise Sioux City as a manufacturing dis and ma uh, wholesaling and distribution center. Um, the ribbon and button you see here, that is not a Walter Meyer produced, but just a, a ribbon from this particular event. Now, I can't for 100% say if Walter Meyer took this photo, but he is in this photo. Walter Meyer in the Cur Curtis Airplane, June of 1910. J.C. Bud Mars was traveling across the United States showing this gr new technology of flight. So this is at Woodland Park, again in South Riverside, and Mars was planning to make the first airplane flight over Sioux City, and Walter Meyer just took advantage of this, this photography opportunity. Another parade depicted by Walter Meyer, this is the Elks Convention Parade of 1911. Thousands of benevolent and protective order of elk met in Sioux City for their state convention here. They were headquartered at the auditorium building at 7th and Douglas. Of course, this image is of a parade on 4th Street looking east from 4th and Pierce. Another fire, the Lindholm Furniture Company burned in 1912. Um, it was at the southwest corner of 5th and Douglas Street. Um, and this was on the 19th and 20th of March, 1912. Um, we can see in this image, in the lower right-hand corner near me, he's changed up his signature a little bit, and this is actually an impression he's using now in some of his more recent photography, as if 1912 was recent. It is as far as we're concerned. Walter Meyer captured several images of the Ruff disaster when the Oscar Ruff drugstore at the old Hedges block collapsed in June of 1918. It was undergoing renovation and was still open. The building collapsed, started a fire. Now what we have here, Walter Meyer's wife, Rose, she owned a costume masquerade and photo shop in that building on the third floor. When it collapsed, she survived and was eventually, hours later, rescued by Henry Miller of the Hook and, Fire Department Hook and Ladder Company, number one. Mrs. Walter Meyer operated this costume shop from 1905 to until 1937. This is an advertisement from the Sioux City Journal for her masquerade shop. A later photo, 1920, this one again of one of the last um, interstate livestock fairs taken by Walter Meyer. This shows, um, this is after the, the, the racetrack had changed locations and this shows much more of the Midway and livestock exhibition barns there on the far left. So now, kind of for almost our last category, but it's a big one. Where do I put all the miscellaneous images? Under group photos, portraits, sports, clubs, businesses, buildings. You'll get the gist of it. This is a relatively famous image of Sioux City's 
most major league baseball team, 1891. These are the Sioux City Cornhuskers. They played four seasons in the Western Association from 1888 to 1891. Again, this is a Walter Meyer image, and I'm not going to read all their names, but when you find this online, you can take more time to look through them all. That same year, Walter Meyer took individual portraits and assembled um, this card advertising the Sioux City Cornhuskers of 1891. The Cornhuskers were very successful, um, and in 1891, they won the Western Association pennant. This is kind of a, an oddball, an outlier among Walter Meyer images. This is the trial of plenty horses. This was taken in Fort Meade, South Dakota. The trial went from April to May of 1891. So plenty horses, who you can see here in the lower left, also known as Tasunka Odo, was on trial for the murder of Lieutenant Edward Casey. This was just after the Wounded Knee Massacre. The big question of the trial was Plenty Horse's killing of Casey, was it murder or was it an act of war? After nearly a month-long trial, Judge Oliver Perry halted the trial, declared that there was indeed a state of war. So Plenty Horse's was released. In this image, again, we can see Plenty Horse's down here and a handful of witnesses, both for and against Plenty Horse's, including Peter Richards, right here, and bear that lays down. Walter Meyer captured this image of Union plumbers who were about to march in the Labor Day parade here in Sioux City in 1891. Now nationwide, the first Labor Day was celebrated in New York City in 1886. Sioux City celebrated its first Labor Day in 1888 in conjunction with the Corn Palace Festival of that year, which usually was in late September or early October. It wasn't until around 1890 or 91 that an official day was set as Labor Day. Here we go back to Moses E. E. Flat Reed. This here he is depicted with his 4th Regiment Band. Again, these would all be Iowa National Guard members, and this was the Regiment Band. Moses Reed started brass bands in Sioux City, four of them, between 1876 and 1892. And as I mentioned, they played for the National Guard encampments. In case you're wondering about E flat, E flat is a music key, E flat major. It's very popular. It was very popular for brass bands at, at the end of the 19th and early part of the 20th centuries. We go back to the Cornhuskers. Here we are at a Cornhuskers baseball game at Evans Driving Park in 1894. Evans Park was located at 21st and Center Streets from 1887 to 1894. It was home to the Cornhuskers, as well as horse racing and marksmanship contests. Lots of other sporting events, too, were held at this driving park on the west side. At that game, Walter Meyer captured this image of the 1894 Cornhuskers. A new Western League had been formed after the old Western Association had fallen apart. Cornhuskers were revived and played this additional season in 1894. They won the Western League pennant that year as well. Harness racing at Evans Park in 1894. So this caption from the journal, Evans Park in Crescent Park was an outdoor studio for Mr. Walter Meyer. So much like Riverside, Walter Meyer would have been out there at every event taking pictures of anyone and everything. Then there are, we have some random fun images that were taken in the Riverside Park area, uh, like this um, image titled Johnny Smith's Joke at the Tribune Camp around 1894. Again, we know this photo was taken around 1894 because I found very, very similar images or an identical images in Sioux City advertising from 1895. Here are the boat club's tennis, here's the boat club's tennis team. I don't know which boat club, but both tennis and bowling became wildly popular at the boat clubs, so much so that the Sioux City uh, Boat Club had to pass a bylaw stating that the boat club's primary activity was to be boating. <laughs> Here is the Inter-Ocean Club 
clubhouse depicted in around 1894. Um, it was a bicycle and young men's club that was located in Riverside Park, just along with uh, the other boat clubs. An interesting image, this is um, the quote, uh, quote, landing of the pilgrims at McCook Lake in 1895. They don't know exactly who the pilgrims are, but they were boating on McCook Lake. So there you have that. Picnickers, a generic picnicker shot at uh, Riverside Park around 1895. Here we have a fun day in Riverside Park around 1895. This is a nice image because we can see who these people are. Unfortunately, there's still one person unidentified because there are only eight names and nine people. <laughs> this is Captain West Camp, kind of a, a neat image over, taken around 1895. What I like about this is this image could possibly date back as far as 1891 because you can see there's this coat rack here with the 1891 date. But what I also like about this, Walter Meyer produced this image, again, as, as advertising like many of his others, there are his photos in a small basket on this table in the foreground. Here is a depiction of the Women's Athletic Club from around 1895. Grace Toy organized the Women's Athletic Club at the Sioux City Boat Club in the early 1890s. This is a neat image off of a glass plate negative. We didn't have any prints of this one, um, and, and we still don't, it's just digital now. This is a rifle shooting contest. These are the prize winners at Riverside Park, taken around 1895. This is a, a great image of J.A. Foy's um, Tally Ho uh, coach, which he purchased in Chicago in 1890. It was pulled by six horses and could carry 25 people. So this is a Sioux City Bus Lines Tally Ho coach around 1895. Some commercial photography. Here we have an early depiction of Chesterman and Lane Bottling Works taken around 1895. This Bottling Works uh, was at West 15th and Omaha Streets in the Perry Creek Valley. And in this image we can see standing at the door CeeLo Chesterman, C.B. Chesterman, and Frederick Lane. The, here is a depiction of the city scales at 425 Water Street around 1895. The city scales were under some controversy in 1892 and 1893. They were weighing products coming in and out of Sioux City, but they were weighing too low. So a new scale was purchased in 1894. Um, Native American photography was very popular in the 1890s and early 20th century. Um, here we have Frank Thunder in a photo taken around 1897. Now, as we kind of look at this, this is not authentic Native American wear of any kind. Um, so it is my guess that while this was taken in, Walter, within, in, in an indoor studio, that he was probably dressed by Walter Meyer, uh, 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 or Rose may have had some of her business going by this point in the late 1890s. So, He's, he's just dressed up like, I guess, a Native American should be. I'm, I'm not quite sure. We have several other images like this, including uh, this another image with Frank Thunder, who's depicted with one of the Walter Meyer's children. That's William Worth Walter Meyer, depicted here with Frank Thunder. Uh, we have here an unidentified family, again, clad in kind of Native American-looking clothes, but not really. Um, as I mentioned, portraits of Native Americans became really popular in the late 1800s. Many of the subjects began asking for pay to be photographed because they knew they sold well. Walter Meyer captured this image of Annie Oakley around 1895. While living in Ashland, Walter Meyer befriended Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill's traveling Wild West show came through Sioux City with regularity. So we, I believe that Walter Meyer snapped this photo probably in the mid-1890s, possibly as late as about 1905. Walter Meyer captured other famous Westerners, too, including Buffalo Bill himself and Wild Bill Hickok. A nice photo of some unidentified musicians around 1895. Johnny Sassano is depicted here in 18, around 1895. The Sioux City Journal wrote a Sassano 
If the occasion was of real splendor, Sassano and his harp were certain to be there. Very popular performer at big and small events. Here we have the Taylor sisters around 1895. They are Mamie and Madge, twin sisters. They were regular performers at the PB Grand Opera House. Speaking of the PB Grand Opera House, Walter Meyer took a picture of that. And here it is, the PB Grand Opera House stood at the corner, uh, northwest corner of 4th and Jones Street from 1888 to 1931 when it burned. Just a couple of identif unidentified theater actors, possibly at the PV Grand, possibly at Walter Meyer's studio, possibly at Rose Walter Meyer's studio. Here we have D.A. McGee again. Here he is at War Eagle's grave around 1893. So we've talked a little bit about McGee. He was a businessman, politician, public official. He was Rose Walter Meyer's brother and Walter Meyer's brother, Philip Walter Meyer's brother-in-law. Here's that same spot again. But this time, we actually have a marker for War Eagle's grave. This image was taken about 12 years after that other image, but War Eagle had no grave marker until 1896 and no permanent marker until 1922. Cudahy Packing Company is depicted by Walter Meyer. This photo from 1899. Cudahy was the largest of Sioux City's big three packing plants of the early 20th century, and this was the city's largest employer with over 2,500 workers. Going back to baseball, um, this is uh, Walter Meyer's image of the Sioux City Indians. They played one lone season after the Western League um, had been reformed in 1900. So this is nice because we have the front of the pin with all the, all the players' names, and this is the one pin we actually have the back of where it says, PC Walter Meyer, manufacturer of photographic and advertising buttons. It's really cool to have one with that little paper in the back. The Sioux Gun Club, depicted here around 1900. The Gun Club formed in 1894, and it was located at the base of Isabella Street on the banks of the Missouri River in what is today the Triview Industrial Park area. And again, this is a case where they're doing target practice and any stray bullets would have just gone in the river or across into Nebraska. The IBBH, number 36, around 1900. The International Brotherhood of Blacksmiths and Helpers are depicted here gathered outside the federal building at 6 in Douglas. Here's the interior of the Iowa Telephone Company um, operators around 1900. This exchange was located in the Hedges Block at 401 4th Street. This is that building that had collapsed and would collapse, you know, about 18 years after this. Here are the Knights of Columbus at Cathedral of the Epiphany around 1904. So construction of St. Mary's Church started in 1891. The building, when it was completed, around the time this picture was taken in 1904, was known as the Cathedral of the Epiphany. Sioux City Diocese formed in 1902. That's why Sioux City ended up with a cathedral. One note about this image, if you've ever seen it before, you can see the stained glass is intact on the first floor, but on the second and third floor, it's not yet there. This image was taken so soon after completion of the building that those upper floors, the stained glass had not yet been put in place. That why, that's why it just appears as glass instead of stained glass. Here's a depiction of James Toys, a uh, Farmers Loan and Trust Company. Uh, this is a, a dinner or picnic at uh, the Riverside Boat Club. 1904. This is the Frank Burtaw cabin near Jefferson, South Dakota in 1904. As I noted before, there were some Walter Meyer images in the newspaper. Well, Walter Meyer was one of the journal's major contributors for news stories. He took, he, many of his images appeared in the paper between 1895 and 1910. What this image is depicting is Burtaw, a wealthy hermit. He's showing an investigator where burglars broke out the window of his cabin. Morningside College football team, 1904. The Iowa National Guard Armory, depicted in 1905. This was Company H's equipment ready for inspection. 
the Sioux City Packers baseball team at Riverside Park. This is 1905, and it was the largest baseball crowd for this team at that time. 5,000 spectators watched Sioux City and Des Moines in a doubleheader on August 7th. Here we see the Sioux City Packers team of 1908 in Mizzou Park, which was on the riverfront. And these people are all identified as well. Walter Meyer took this panorama of another Packers game, the Sioux City Packers versus Omaha in 1908. Over 8,000 people were gathered at this event to watch the Sioux City Packers sweep Omaha in a doubleheader to win the Western League pennant, this in September of 1908. Paddy and Prince, the famous fire horse team, are depicted in both photograph and button produced by Walter Meyer. They had won a state Iowa State contest in Clinton, Iowa on the 29th of July, 1908. Here's a slightly later photograph of the Sioux City Packers baseball team around 1910. The Packers played home games in both Riverside Park and at Mizzou Park in downtown, uh, roughly where the Tyson Event Center is today. This is a, a later image. This is the Sioux City Motor Sales Company um, selling Hayes automobiles. This is located at 319 uh, and 317 Fifth Street. One last little segment. S Walter Meyer was a commercial photographer, and his images appeared in numerous publications. We sometimes don't have original photos, but we have booklets that have them. So just, you can see this handful here. This is seven productions that have Walter Meyer images, and we're just going to look at each of them just a little bit. The publication Sioux City Through a Camera, published in 1895, full of Walter Meyer views, including this image looking east on 4th Street from Nebraska, prior to the Pelletier Fire. So all these buildings would burn in 1904. This booklet, Souvenir of Sioux City, published in 1899. Here I've put in the Security Nas National Bank building, which was located at 4th and Nebraska Street. The Sioux City Tribune's 20th Century Outlook Edition is really a newspaper, but it features many images, including all of these photographs, Cathedral of the Epiphany, St. Joseph Church, the First Baptist Church, the Norwegian Lutheran Church, Mount Sinai Synagogue, Unity Church, all of these images by Walter Meyer. The booklet Sioux City of Today, here is of 1903. Um, here's Walter Meyer's image of 4th Street looking east from Douglas. The Grand Lodge of Iowa Souvenir Program from 1904. Here we see the Federal Building, City Hall, and Sioux City High School. The Sioux City Journal Carriers Edition of 1906 featured many photographs taken by Walter Meyer including the Chicago Northwestern Railroad Depot and the Great Northern or Union Railroad Depot. A later carrier's edition from 1908 um, featured Sioux City schools. Um, I've used this image that shows the schools of Morningside, including Morningside College, Longfellow School, Whittier, and then a view of Morningside Avenue. And then the cleverly named 100 Peeps at Sioux City. Um, here is just a collage of several homes depicted by Walter Meyer. Again, there are over 100 views in that booklet. So beyond those kind of publications, many Walter Meyer photos were also used in postcards. Sometimes they're attributed to him, sometimes they're not. You can see at the bottom of this image, we have a photo by Walter Meyer. So that's really nice when that happens, but we have lots of postcards in our collection of images we've already seen in this talk. So this is the United Building at Fifth and Pierce. This is a postcard of the big, of boating on the Big Sioux River, published in 1908. The Floyd Monument, we've already seen this image before. This is the Cathedral Epiphany from a postcard booklet. So not just an individual postcard, but a, a, a little flip book full of postcards. Um, this, so this is uh, Walter Meyer's image in a postcard book of the Cathedral of the Epiphany. Oh, there are those elephants in Riverside Park. St. Joseph Hospital, 1909. 
And from that postcard booklet, this is a view taken from Prospect Hill overlooking the wholesale district. Now, there's been a lot of diverse photography, but we've come almost to the end. Walter Meyer did retire, and he did die. Otherwise, he'd be like 170 years old today. So, after 50 years in the photography business, Walter Meyer uh, retired in 1919. He died on the 26th of February, 1922, at age 70. His wife, he was survived by his wife, Rose Mary McGee, Walter Meyer. She continued her costume shop until 1937. She did not pass away until 1940. Daughter, Ethel May Walter Meyer Risner, 1886 to her passing in 1971. A couple of sons, Claude Walter Meyer, who would later go on to manage a laundry business here in Sioux City. William Worth Walter Meyer, who we saw in this talk depicted with uh, Frank Thunder, he was later manager of the Warrior Hotel. Walter Meyer was preceded in death by two children, Clarence, who was 16, and David, who was 28 or 29. And lastly, he and his wife are buried in Graceland Cemetery. So that is just a little bit about Philip C. Walter Meyer. Uh, there's a whole lot more, but you can only pack so much into 45 minutes. 